Trump lawyers are unbearable. And the more you know about legal practice, the more unbearable they become. They insult the intelligence of everyone in the courtroom almost every time they speak. The same is true with the criminal defense lawyers for many of Donald Trump's co-defendants. And today, it was Georgia's Fulton County District Attorney Fawny Willis's day to endure the unbearable stupidity and dishonesty of the defense lawyers for Donald Trump's criminal co-defendant who was facing the revocation of his bail for violating the terms of his bail. District Attorney Fawny Willis did not leave this hearing to her very able team of assistant district attorneys. She handled it herself. And as the proceeding wore on, much more tediously than it should have because of what District Attorney Willis called the absurdity of the defense lawyers, District Attorney Willis gave up on the polite language of the courtroom that her staff was, was urging her to use. And you're so uh, dense, you don't know that the proffer is evidence. When in her proffer, the condition is that she's a witness, they want me to say it's disingenuous. It's a lie, Your Honor. She meant that the defense lawyers in the hearing today were lying something you almost never hear lawyers accused of in court. And in the very rare cases when that does happen, the lawyers who are accused of lying always jump up and object, always. Not today. The criminal defense lawyer is appearing for defendant Harrison Floyd, who was accused of trying to intimidate witnesses in the case, did not find a way to object when District Attorney Willis called them liars. The absurdity of the defendant's argument. Defendant falsely claims that he does not know who the witnesses are. Your Honor, that's just a lie. It's just a lie. There's no other thing to call it. The defendant didn't speak in the courtroom today, so it was the lawyers she was calling liars, and they all knew that. District Attorney Willis started off smoothly enough, methodically, laying in the evidence that defendant Harrison Floyd violated the terms of his bail by communicating directly and indirectly with witnesses and co-defendants in the case. But the more she had to listen to what she called the lies of the defense attorneys, she became increasingly uh, forceful, I guess you'd call it, in her denunciation of those lies. My team asked me to tone it down because I referred to it initially as lunacy, and they asked that I refer to it as absurdity. So, no, he does not have the right to communicate about facts of this case with witnesses, which he did with Jenna Ellis, which he did with Sterling, which he's very well aware of and was served. And it is not the state's fault if the defense is unprepared, which was their argument. We're unprepared. We don't know what's in the discovery. Not my problem. Here, the bond conditions are not arbitrary and capricious because the conditions are a reasonable response to the trial court's functioning of balancing the defendant's rights with the public safety interest while avoiding the intimidation of prosecution witnesses, which was the exact purpose here. But Your Honor doesn't have to find it was intimidating. You can say, you know what, calling witnesses pieces of shit, it don't even matter. I don't find that to be intimidating. Do you find they communicated? Do you find that they communicated with co-defendants? Do you find they communicated with witnesses? If you find that, then you find that he violated the bond order and you have to decide, do we have an interest as a society in keeping witnesses in this case safe? Do we have an interest in this case of keeping the other defendants from having a fair trial? The judge found that defendant Harrison Floyd did indeed violate his bond agreement, but the judge did not revoke his bail and put him in jail. Instead, the judge supervised a rewrite of the bond agreement to an even more strict ban on the defendant publicly mentioning any of the witnesses or co-defendants in the case. Joining us now, Gwen Keyes, former district attorney of DeKalb County, Georgia, and Harry Lippman, former deputy assistant attorney general. He is the senior legal affairs analyst for the Los Angeles Times. Uh, and Gwen Keyes, uh, with your experience uh, in uh, working in that uh, area, what did you make of that hearing today? Well, first and foremost, the fact that DA Willis handled it herself me demonstrates to me that she is taking the protection of her witnesses, the protection of her team, uh, and the integrity of this case very seriously, and wants to ensure that the judge does as well.
Uh, Harry Lippman, uh, this is uh, two days in a row uh, this week where we're in hearings about what criminal defendants, whether it be Donald Trump or a co-defendant of his, can say about witnesses and prosecutors and, uh, uh, and co-defendants in the case. I think that's right. I actually think Donald Trump was sort of the unseen presence in the courtroom today, Lawrence. As Gwen says, it's very noteworthy and unusual for the head of the office to step up and handle it personally. And I think she was basically communicating if defendants uh, intimidate witnesses, they're going to get their bail revoked. And guess who that might be referring to? And I think McAfee himself, for that, that he said, you know, there was a violation here, but I'm not going to revoke. I think he was also thinking of that prospective motion and not wanting to be boxed in. So tr Trump, I think, was on everybody's mind in the court, even though he was not there. Uh, Gwen Keyes, was, was Fonnie Willis trying to send a message, I, I assume she was, to all of the other defendants and, as Harry says, in particular, Donald Trump? And I certainly think so. But let's remember, she is a prosecutor's prosecutor. This is what she does in terms of protecting the integrity of her case and her witnesses. And with each and every question, you saw her being deliberate and methodical about establishing the facts here. And the judge ruled in her favor on the facts in terms of finding a violation. Uh, but thinking ahead to other defendants, took it upon himself to to rewrite the 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 bond conditions as opposed to the more serious uh, implications of sending the defendant back to jail.